It's the last match of the evening. We're on Overgrowth and spawning to the top right hand corner in purple, playing Zerk. For my risk and Germany, it's Mitsukotsu. Our little kitty barf! And to the bottom left in blue, playing Protoss for She's Got the Lane. Miss Mike wearing her props a little bit. And Chile, it's Piscalita. So already punting down a pylon, PVZ, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how this matchup is gonna get played out. So Piscalita already sending out her first probe right after the pylon, wants to make sure that her opponent is not indeed going for some sort of early pool, but Mitsukatsu does not transition or so goes into a hatch first. Well, her typical standard openings against Protoss usually include a hatch first, um, then a gas into pool, and then a pretty early third base as quickly as possible. So let's see if she wants to do this once more. We will probably not see some sort of two base shenanigans out of her. That would be rather untypical for her. But you never know. Like I said before, this is not your common ladder game. Uh, players actually have time to prepare for each other. They can study each other's games against the other players. Or against uh, themselves if uh, they just have a look at Season 1, since both players were already around in Season 1 and have already faced each other. But of course, that wouldn't be really uh, up-to-date information you'd get there. So, in the meantime, we have two assimilators almost done for Piscalita. Her wall is, well, not tied yet. But yeah, that's uh, that actually looks like more in order <laughs> than, the, uh, than the walls we've seen out of Midas so far. So, it seems as if Piscalita is a little bit more experienced, maybe, with the walling off part of the Protoss play. Or maybe Midas just likes to be artsy when doing walls. You never know. So, Overlord getting inside the main base, well, not really getting far into the main base, she just wants to scurrows to just scout the edges of Piscalita's base, seeing what's going on there, how many buildings are there, in which order they are being placed down, and then she can just fly out for now, getting a better spot where units can't really take out that Overlord to fly in later on and get a better grasp of the tech choices that Piscalita is going to make throughout the game. So, metabolic boost in the making, and like I said before, we have an early third base, usually before the 30 minute mark, mostly around between 2.30 and 3 minutes, is when Mitsukatsu likes to get her base down. So, a few Zerglings just make it to the entrance, uh, actually kill off that probe that was sitting there and blocking the entrance towards the natural base, but the probe was quick enough to wall off completely for a moment so that the Zergling wouldn't be able to get in, waiting until the Stalker finally arrived, and now it fills the gap, and the Mothership Core is out as well, so no more chances for Mitsukatsu to do really heavy damage unless she actually hard, or she actually committed very hard to get through this, um, through this wall by, for example, using a Baneling Bust or something, which, again, has also become pretty uncommon recently. So, Mitsukots are also moving out a few more Overlord to the outskirts of her bases, just wants to make sure that no proxy is around anywhere. So, in the meantime, now sending the Overlord from behind here back into the base to get some better scouting information, because Lita already has this... Uh, the um, Stalker out, which is actually quite risky what she does right here, but now she realizes herself and just puts the sentry in line as well. I mean, if Mitsukots actually only had waited for something like that... I mean, this was really... actually, this was a, a, a commonly used tactic in the older days, where you would just send in the... Um, where you would just send in the Overlord to just lure the sentries back to kill it, to keep it from scouting, and then once these sentries just moved towards the Overlord and started firing at them, that was just your signal as Zerg to move in and maybe tear down these uh, buildings with Baneling busts and Lings, because then was just the best time because the sentries couldn't help out with the force field, so you would actually just make your opponent 
um, you know, just lure your opponent into trap. And that was just possible because back in the good old Hots and Vol days, you would always need sentries to just defend whatever it was you wanted to defend as Protoss. Sentries were always an integral part of your army. And uh, you need to have quite a lot of them, but they don't deal that much damage. So if you really wanted to shoot down an Overlord, you actually had to pull more than only one. And uh, that just opened an opportunity for your opponent. And some people really made use of that. So Mitsukasa just checking the outskirts of her base once more. Again, wants to really make sure that no proxy locations are around anywhere. Even spots the Overseer. Uh, might even be able to tear it down, but yeah, who just barely gets it. And wow, this Overseer provided some vision there. Just at the edges of the Overseer vision, the Queen just managed to um, put the last shot into the Observer hull, making it fall down. So, and the Stalkers now move out. Uh, Pisk Leader obviously wants to secure a third base as fast as possible. Well, Mitsukatsu also not the absolutely aggressive player. I mean, she can be aggressive at times, but she also likes to macro up on three bases, getting towards a good army composition while keeping her opponent, uh, or while keeping an eye on her opponent and uh, just checking what the army composition of the opponent is, trying to get the ultimate counter composition once her bases have finally been saturated. But now a quite strong army is actually moving out um, towards Mitsukotsu's base here. We have a lot of sentries in the mix. Uh, like I said before, in other games that we've seen against, uh, that, that we've seen Piskalita play. Oh, does she actually want to go through here? Okay, hmm, quite interesting there. So Mitsukotsu already has some mutas out here, but the mutas won't really help her that much. Was trying to take a fourth base over here at the gold base, but it just gets denied immediately. So now a lot of her lings and mutas just trying to get in. Piskalita always will have the possibility to just move out. Let's see how long she actually decides to fight. Some of the force, force, fields, force fields are out. Okay, force fields mostly protecting the ground army here, but not as efficiently, I think. Oh, no, actually, actually, they do. Okay, it, I couldn't really see how many force fields got thrown down on the, all of these muted lists. But yeah, the force field surrounding was pretty well done, so most of the links actually couldn't get towards the units, or at least not with a good surface area here. Now, um, Piscalita even just... Um, keeping her opponent out with these force feeds, killing off the third with ease. So now Mitsukots are actually missing one base. She tries to get more Mutalisks out. Mutalisks might kind of help her, but there's a lot of Stalkers in the mix already. Plus we also have the possibility to throw down... Do we have the possibility? No. Not enough energy to force uh, to, to throw down Guardian Shields, but they might not even be necessary. Again, just keeping most of these links apart with the sentries here. And Piscalita playing sort of an old school style with a lot of sentries trees in here that has become a little bit out of fashion but it works tremendously against Mitsukatsu who was obviously not expecting that sort of old style push had it along her way so just had the wrong army composition at all to deal with it and Piscalita takes the first map. Second map of the best of five we're on Echo Mitsukatsu being down 0-1 Piscalita just managed to surprise her opponent with an army composition that Mitsukatsu was obviously not expecting at all. Almost blind countering their opponent, her opponent there. Don't actually know how much information Piscalita had there. Uh, we've seen this kind of push out of her uh, quite often, so to me it just looks like uh, almost like a build order win, you could say here, or just an army composition blind counter win. She just happened to have the right army units there, so that Mitsukotsu couldn't really do anything against it. And like I said, Mitsukotsu probably not expecting what Piscalita was throwing at her, so was not really prepared for the mass amount of force fields. And then also good force field using of Piscalita there, always having just enough in order to keep the ground units away from her main army so that the stalkers actually had time to shoot at the mutas while the links were just running around doing nothing mostly. So Piscalita already saw that her opponent was going for a hatch first build, will probably feel a little bit better now and as Midas she's also going for a quick wall off at the natural ramp to make it a little bit easier for her to secure her natural base that she will now take a little bit later than Zerg, but that's just typical in this matchup. 
going Nexus first is still pretty greedy against a Zerg player, but actually on this map it might work. But still, we know Mitsukatsu uh, is also preparing for her opponents, so if she's actually studied Piscolita, um, you never know if she just goes for a few early links and tries to harass you wherever she can. So Mitsukatsu now moving across the map. Uh, Piscolina in the meantime just moving her probe over to the third base, might even just pylon block this if she wants to, to just annoy her opponent uh, for a little longer. Uh, right now she's not really blocking the third base and will not do so once the drone arrives, and like I said, between tw uh, 2.30 and 3 minutes is usually when Mitsukatsu takes her base, this time even a little bit earlier. So the four uh, Zerglings arrive again at uh, the entrance, so the probe is still there blocking the entrance. Will now probably just throw down on the building or not this time around! Ooh, Piscalina not paying attention this time around, so unfortunately missing! the important building to block off these zerglings here and the zerglings get in get a good surround on the pylon actually taking out the pylon not unpowering any of these structures since there's a second pylon as well but now the gap is wide open uh, luckily for Piscalita Mitsukatsu did not um, commit to or did not um, invest more resources into producing more units of course she couldn't really um, expect her opponent to not react in time to seal that off. I mean, uh, getting inside that base like this is a very rare thing to happen. So, of course, Mitsukatsu didn't really just want it to spend many, many resources on just the guess that her opponent might F up her uh, defenses here. But yeah, just getting getting one pylon, getting a good scout in here, not really dealing that much damage, but still a nice little hiccup here in Piscalita's play, and in the meantime getting her third up as well. So this looks quite nice for Mitsukatsu already. Stargate play by Piscalita, quite interesting. Let's see what she really wants to get out of it, if it's going to be Phoenixes, or if she just wants to go for an Oracle harassment, but just not a proxy one. So Mitsukatsu seems to... no, okay, that's just basically the Stalker over here. Mitsukatsu also has some uh, Overlords in position to uh, check the air routes, but also to fly in later on into the main base to scout what Piscalida is up to. So Banging Nest this time around for Mitsukatsu, also getting plus one upgrade. And there the Oracle is in production. Six more links being produced. Hmm, quite interesting here. Seems as if this time around Mitsukatsu actually wants to Bane Bust. Channeling her inner Sunokazuri. Because otherwise it wouldn't really make sense to produce that many links right now. So yeah, looks like a Bane Bust. Let's see how this is going to happen. I mean, I mean, I don't really know if Mitsukatsu actually studied her opponent before the game. Because then I think she would have known that her opponent likes to go for a lot of sentries, especially after the first game. So she might actually know, uh, or might actually not get anything done with it, since the sentries can always just close every gap that the banelings create by using force fields. So at least Mitsukatsu got the information about the four gateways here using the Overlord and sacrificing it in. Now Mitsukatsu just starts to run across the map and then just retreats because she's probably just seen the Oracle over here, although the links won't really help. Okay, just decides for the links to tear down that cooling tower over here and blocking that other entrance towards her third base. In the meantime, the extractor just moves in, uh, gets a few drone kills over here before the spore crawler will finally finish and the queen uh, will drive the oracle away in the meantime. Again, nice move there by Piscalita, still uh, buying some time. Oh, not taking a third base, now she tries to do so, but there's a Zerkling out here as well. And unfortunately this time around she's not sending her first few units across the map first. So this uh, expansion will get delayed even a little more, maybe even losing the probe here. Yep, just barely, and now the Mothership Core just has to fly in and take out... Oh no, actually she uses the Stalkers to take out that Zerkling, and only then will she be able to get down that Nexus here. But delaying it a little bit more, and now Mitsukatsu of course now is for sure that her opponent wants to go for a third base. So she could just either transition into a fourth herself, or just mass up a lot of units and try to punish her for trying to get that third up, or trying to deny it more correctly. 
But not much is happening in Mitsukatsu's base. We have some more drones, now a few more roaches. Everything's just slowly getting into movement. Yeah, the economy is not there yet, so it seems as if she just wants to get up into... Yeah, okay, looks as if uh, she abandoned her bane-busting plan, if there ever was one. Maybe she just wanted to have a few more links out because she was just feeling unsafe and didn't really know if Pisclita would come her way or not. Or uh, if Pisclita came her way or not, so she rather wanted to have some units out, uh, just in case. Uh, so only a few safety links. So Oracle getting into position, trying to get uh, another few, uh, uh, some more new, trying to get a few more drones in the natural base. But there's a spore crawler in place, so this Oracle shouldn't really be able to deal that much damage. Maybe getting a drone or a second one, but yeah, then we'll have probably just to move out. Maybe even getting killed if this leader is not careful here. Yeah? yeah, okay, getting getting more than two drones, but losing the Oracle in the process, and not really worth it. I mean, three drones are nothing at that point in time. Um, Mitsukatsu can actually easily um, replace them. And now she goes for the big push. She has a lot of Ravagers in the mix, also a lot of Banelings, so she will just probably try to crush through with sheer brute force. Piscolita has a lot of force feeds available, so she might be able to just keep out all of these Banelings, but it will be everything. Again, like in Wings of Liberty and Huts, everything will come down to the force field usage. So let's see if Piscalita is actually on top of her game or if the force fields will not be in place and everything is going to die in a big green explosion and then uh, in the follow-up to these Ravager Biles. So let's see. Uh, Overseer just flies across the map, sees the army composition, sees where it is. Mitsukatsu just waiting a little bit more for 26 Zerglings to arrive, I feel. And then she will probably just move in. Yeah, this, this army is actually pretty scary. Especially since the Zerglings and the rest of the units will just make the AI of these units go crazy. I mean, this is a good position. We have the pylons here. We have uh, some place where Piscilla can actually retreat to. She can use the force fields quite nicely done here. And like I said, force fields just side everything here so keeping everything out and away from her army Mitsukotsu just has to retreat for a moment here um, wait but of course she's now soft containing her opponent is not getting into the fourth base though, though so it seems as if she really wants to finish the game right here and right now taking down one of the pilots is already a small victory might even take out the other one and now of course it gets more difficult oh the force fields not there and unfortunately the sentries were all in front getting demolished by the bailings there so all of the important force fields um, force field units now gone, uh, the Ravagers fighting straight up against the army, raining down Biles on the units, more army coming from the left hand side and it seems as if Piscalita will just barely be able to hold the first push but now the immortals die as well, the reinforcements of Mitsukotsa arrive and it seems as if Mitsukotsa has just broken her opponent. Wow, she could also now just only go into the third base and kill it down if she wanted to. Seems as if Mitsukotsu feels comfortable in getting into the natural base right now. She even brought some queens with her for anti-air. The Phoenix is trying to lift as many units as they can, but uh, they can't really lift the big damage dealers just trying to lift the queens and taking them out, but there's just too many of them. And now the rest of the road to Ravager, well, mostly Ravager army, just moves into the natural base. There's not much time for Pescalita to catch some breath and uh, now she has to pull the probes and that's never a good sign ladies and gentlemen 64 to 136 supply Mitsukatsu just breaking through the defenses GG and Mitsukatsu ties the series 1 to 1 third map is Vani and after being down 0-1, Mitsukatsu managed to get herself back into the series by tying the series with a 1-1. One -one. A Roach Ravager and Banelings and Piscalita unfortunately missing those crucial force fields and then also having the sentries right in front and they all got demolished by the Banelings. Very unfortunate for her there. But yeah, that was always the big problem of the Protoss race back in Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm. Look away from your army, forget to force field, or just throw your force field at the wrong place, and you were most of the time pretty dead.
actually were pretty dead most of the time, because that's just English grammar for you. You usually put the time phrase at either the end of the sentence or the beginning. So, Piscalita checking her opponent again. Uh, really wants to play safe, wants to make sure that her opponent is not going for some sort of proxy shenanigans or for some sort of early pool uh, while taking the back pocket expansion. Uh, same as probably going, oh, Mitsukotsu gets sniffed out immediately, uh, goes for the extractor and the spawning pool. Um, but yeah, basically it just sees it right away, quite interesting here. Uh, seems as if she just wants to go for the hatchery on the outside as well. Was probably expecting her opponent to just pile on block this anyway, so she just wants to take this. Or it was either a plan anyways, uh, because that, um, having a base uh, down here just helps you to get your creep spread forward a little bit better. And it also makes it more difficult for the opponent to check for the third base timing later on. So, well, not not, not real now. I mean, with, with the abilities that Protoss now has, like Mothership Core flying in or something like that, it's not really that difficult anymore to scout out that third base. But yeah, um, it, it can be a little bit more problematic to get uh, a grasp of that third base timing if she actually went into the third base or even seen that. While if she took a back space... Oh, actually nicely done here. Third base expansion over to the left-hand side. What is Mitsukotsa planning to do here? This is really interesting, but also quite odd. I mean, of all the maps uh, going for an early extractor and early speed, especially on this one, is quite interesting because it's the most difficult one to actually get some damage done early on with just links or melee units in general because it's so easy to just seal off that main ramp with a few buildings and it's also a small ramp at that so you can't really attack with a big uh, surface area and uh, you just need to get uh, you just need to wall this off in order to protect two bases so yeah going for an aggressive or a potentially aggressive opening is quite odd but maybe she just wants to drop play here that would also work out quite nicely i mean it was an aggressive opening you would expect her to do something aggressive or maybe that's just what mitsukotsa is doing right here just mind gaming her opponent after uh Piscalita scouted what Mitsukotsu was doing. Maybe Mitsukotsu decided to just change it up and uh, letting her think that uh, she would go for something aggressive, letting her waste resources on defenses while she herself just expanded like crazy. But then again, why wouldn't she just take this base over here? Is, is this base really easier to defend? I mean, she's not using it for creep spread right now. So that's really an interesting decision. Maybe she feels like it's easier to defend because she can always just park her units uh, over here somewhere. While it can be quite annoying to just defend between here and that base tucked back there, especially since there are a lot of ramps there, while we have a lot of wide open space out here. So maybe that's just what Mitsukotsu is thinking with all the wide open space, that it will be just easier to defend these bases over here than this one, okay? But whatever, in the meantime she just checks for a third base which hasn't been taken, sees that a lot of army units are up towards that ramp and uh, the Mothership Core is in place as well, so no real damage that she can find here. Wants to go in with the Overlord there, but I think she will not really be able to see that much. We have Stalker and Sentries in position. If, Pis uh, if Piscalita really wants, she could also just fire up that pylon here and shoot the Overlord down, so I don't really see Mitsukotin getting all that much scouting information, but actually she doesn't really need to get in too far to see the robo tech so yeah okay getting everything there is to see uh, not getting the gateways back here though so not really knowing uh whether a big push is coming or not but then of course she's already seen no base um well actually actually i mean around the five minute mark is usually i mean be between 4 30 and five minutes is when you usually want to see a protoss expand and if he or she in this case hasn't expanded by then, you really want to be afraid of some sort of push coming. But sometimes it's just too late to realize what's going on. So most players just really want to get into the base earlier to see like these warp gates getting more warped in or now morphing. Uh, from gateways into warp gates. But yeah, there's the Overseer just getting a good grasp of what's around. Might even get taken down by the Stalkers. Yeah, and does not escape just barely. 
So from now on out, I feel Mitsukasa will be producing only units. And then we have the first two roaches. Uh, don't know how much I like the roach idea. I mean, it's the same push we've seen before. It's a lot of stalkers, it's sentries, and it's the immortal. Well, last time around she tried to handle this push with only links and muters. It didn't quite work out. So this time around, especially with the amount of force fields available, I think Mitsukatsu really wants to have some Ravagers in order to have the possibility to throw wilds on the force fields to make them go away. Hmm, and maybe Piscalina doesn't really want to pressure her opponent all too much, she just wants to take a third base right behind it. Hmm, let's see what Mitsukatsu actually wants to do with that. If she again just wants to attack on three bases, trying to wipe out her bone, she hasn't really bothered saturating that third base over here. It has had it for quite some time, but has only used it for additional lava. And even that, not all too much, probably because the resources just were missing and she didn't really know what she was up against. So maybe she just wanted to save a little bit of lava and money in order to spend it once uh, she realizes what's going on. But now, unfortunately, being in the big supply block, a supply block she can't really afford right now. The only good thing for Mitsukasa is actually, okay, never mind that there was no War Prism, but there it is! So War Prism giving her the possibility to uh, also reinforce that push. And now we just have Roach Ravager against a lot of Stalkers and only one or two Immortals actually. And a lot of sentries. So taking the sentries down is actually a wise choice. You just focus firing them down as well as she can, knowing that they are a really important part uh, of the strategy. But unfortunately, though, losing most of her ravages in the process, while Piscalita's army has not really gone down at all. And it seems as if Piscalita again will just be able by sheer brute force to get her way into the natural base, will now easily take out the second as well. Mitsukatsu is forced to pull the drones, but there's nothing there to help them out and dish out some damage. Only two queens and Piscalita is probably going to take that game from here out. 17 workers have been killed, a few reinforcements coming from the third base, but they will get cleaned up as soon as they arrive. Finally, the war prison dies, so no reinforcements for Piscalita, but it's just too late. Mitsukatsu drops down below 40 supply, will now lose the second base. Another immortal arrives, so even roaches, I mean, uh, roaches are not even enough against this stalker force. And GG, Piscalita takes the lead with a 2 to 1. So, we're back on daybreak. It's the fourth map of this best of five, spawning to the top right hand position in purple. It's Mitsukatsu, our Zerg player. And to the bottom left in blue, we have Piscalita, our Protoss player. And she's leading 2 to 1. Only needs to win one more game to close it out. And taking the second game of the season off of Mitsukotsu. Mitsukotsu has only lost one match, one best of five so far, and that was against Koshki, right at the first day of the second season. <laughs> How unfortunate for her, and it was pretty close as well. It was a 3-2 to two for Koshki, and Koshki managed to take the win with a mean little four gate <laughs> in the last match. So, in the last game, that was really, really uh, close. A really, really close series. Uh, very, very nerve-wracking and thrilling. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you to have a look at the boards. You can just have a look at the YouTube channel and uh, get all the boards of Season 1 and Season 2. And yeah, the first day of Season 2, that was when Mitsukatsu and Koshki played against each other. So, can she do it? Can Piscalita actually make Mitsukatsu lose another best of five? So Mitsukatsu going for the hatchery. Piscalita has already sniffed out everything. Yeah, also the spawning pool and the extractor here. So this time around, not as aggressive uh, an opening as the first one. And in hindsight, it didn't really make sense for Mitsukatsu to actually go for that early gas and that early pool and that early speed she didn't really accomplish much with it but maybe she was just thinking of something like i said maybe she just changed her plans after getting sniffed out 
So, Mitsukatsu getting inside the main base sees that there is a wall on top of the ramp. So, like we said before, Pescadita not really feeling comfortable with trying to wall off directly uh, at the natural, well, there's not, not a ramp, but at the natural entrance. So, she rather wanted to go for a wall off on top of the ramp and then we'll try to wall this off a little bit later here. She already has a pylon in position, well not really very close to that nexus here, so if actually units manage to move by they could just attack from behind and the pylon would not be able, the photon overcharge would not be able to reach them. In the meantime we have Mitsukatsu again just taking her typical expand and uh, trying to macro it up. Um, Good old Zerg play here. Also has an Overlord in position already that she can use to fly in a little bit later on. Also has an Overlord over here. Uh, some uh, Zerg players actually like to put their Overlords uh, over here, uh, which will grant you vision of that Vespine Geyser here, so you will get information when Protoss is uh, taking the third and fourth gas. Um, but uh, yeah, that was just in that was a thing in Wall as well. This is an old Wings of Liberty map. But now, due to the mothership core, it has become a little bit more difficult to sneak in an overlord uh, back here because the mothership core grants high ground vision. But yeah, once you manage to get the overlord into here, uh, units were most of the time not able to see it. So, getting in with two zerglings here, so Mitsukatsu will not get a scout here because Photon Overcharge just keeps her from doing that. So a little bit unfortunate, but she doesn't really need to have the scout anyways. She does. Does she? Has she actually sent? Looks as if she's already sent her overlord in. What happened to that one overlord? There was one overlord. Yeah, there it is. Okay, never mind. So she got the overlord speed and flew through the main base, got all the information she could ever want to have at that point in time. And now the two overlords are just chilling over at the left hand and flank. So third base is out. We have spore crawlers getting planted down just for possible oracle harass and maybe to give detection in case DTs were headed away. Hatchery is already getting transformed into a lair, so only a few more seconds until overseers will be available as well. And there we have a blink build coming out of Piscolita, who, we've seen it before, actually loves her stalkers. So let's see what she will actually accomplish using blink here. Hmm, I mean, with blink builds it mostly comes down to execution and uh, good harassment. And if she will be able to just make the most out of her blink stalking, uh, blink -stalking units. <laughs> so, Zirkling in position would always uh, see when Pescolita tries to take a third base over here. She also has a Zirkling in position at the Zelnaga Watchtower. So again, just a very very good vision out of Mitsukotsa as we are used um, from her. So, Roaches in production, also some Ravagers. Seems as if uh, Mitsukatsu just well realized for herself that uh, her Ravager, Roach and Bailing Push was uh, very successful in the second game, so she might just want to repeat it. Yeah, actually getting a lot of Zirklings. Is a Bailing Nest already out? It is not, but uh, maybe she's just positive that um, a good composition with a few links just running around the units, keeping the AI busy, will already help her a lot. And the Roaches and the Ravagers then will just deal the rest. So why the Zirklings just keep the units in front occupied, these units can just dish out the damage from behind. So again, Piscalita just moving out, this time around no Immortal. Only Stalkers with Blink and Sentries. Let's see how successful this is actually going to be. Piscolita will probably just move into the third base, trying to deny mining from there, and maybe even taking it out if possible. So the Roaches and Ravagers just running around like crazy, don't know what they actually did here, don't know what they, what was there. Can't, can't really see it. Maybe it was just some sort of misclick, I don't really know. But yeah, um, Piscolita already getting in position, has the Mothership Cure with her army, so she can always get out if need be. Let's see if it's going to, uh, uh, if 
actually going to need a little more bot. Okay, nice force fields once more. And Meatspots realizes it right away. Takes them down now with corrosive vials and now just walks in. And the moment she tears down the force fields, Pisco Leader just gets out. Uh, not uh, after having oh, only killed one, no, actually no worker, no worker there. So only just exchanging a few units and maybe even uh, a queen, I think, uh, that got dealt there. Okay, and there we had probably a warp prism drop somewhere, don't really know where that stalker come from, but yeah, that was probably what happened here. I think I just missed a warp prism harassment somewhere around. That was probably a warp in over here and then another warp in... Uh, with stalkers over here trying to deal some more damage, but it gets cleaned up quite easily. And now Mitsukatsu is on the push, she just uh, was on the move, just moves forwards to push into the third base, which is pretty undefended here. I mean, uh, Pescalita unfortunately just lost a lot of units with that harassment inside the main base. The only thing she has are stalkers and a few sentries, and she's not in position. I mean, with sentries and throwing down the force fields, it's really important that the sentries are already there to cut the army into small chunks but yeah nothing of that sort is going to happen right here basically now tries to get into a good position but she actually cannot save that third base if Mitsukatsu is careful enough with her army here she should just easily take it out while in the meantime the stalker is trying to shoot from the right hand side but yeah with the help of a few biles and the sheer power of the road ravager force and nothing for Piscalita to defend that push Mitsukatsu just takes out the third base while still having her own third and now she could just easily also transition into a fourth if she actually wants to do so uh, since she's just seen the measly amount of army units that Piscalita had and that it's only Blink Stalkers. I mean a big chunk of Blink Stalkers might work very well um, in the right hands of um, a very capable player are always a fearful weapon but uh, this case around I don't think that this small amount of Stalkers is really something that Mitsukatsu needs to be afraid of. And now she actually moves in, has to be careful not to overextend, maybe just slowly chipping down the wall. Uh, Stork is just being on top of the ramp, but Mitsukatsu has an overseer in place. This leader in the meantime trying to get into Colossi, has to be careful the thermal land upgrade is not done yet. So with only an attack range of 6, uh, it's very very difficult and dangerous to engage Mitsukatsu's force there. So Piscalita in the meantime trying to get a third base up. Mitsukatsu not investing into a force. Seems as if she is um, really confident that she will be able to just tear down uh, Piscalita's forces on three bases only. So the only thing we actually see out of her is uh, more units and more tech. And uh, once the first uh, Hydras arrive at the front and will be able to move into Lurkers. Okay, seems as if Mitsukatsu just wants to lay back for a little bit now. Just wants to get more units and more tech up. Also wants to secure a fourth base over here. Don't really know if she actually needed to do that. I think with all the Hydras just coming into the fray. And uh, then just morphing them into Lurkers. That would have been just the final blow for her opponent. But yeah, playing better safe than sorry. So that's what Mitsukatsu does here. Uh, doesn't Like I said, doesn't really want to overextend right into these Colossi. So she rather just waits for Aspire to finish, waits for a fourth base to go up. And getting some Mutalisk out could, I think, even invest into some Corruptors here just to help her dealing with the uh, Colossi. I think Mutas are not really that valuable against that mass amount of Stalkers here. Although, of course, it doesn't really matter if your army is just overwhelming in numbers and that is just what Mitsukatsu's army is. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much if you have the Mutas out or not because these Stalkers will most likely be too occupied fighting other stuff than the Mutas. So they will just help out a little bit as well. And of course, if you have a giant flock of Mutas, uh, the whole thing becomes a different story. So, fourth base is down. We have another attack over at the right hand side. Another warp prism just snuck out this time around. I managed to see it. And uh, there the zealots move in into the third base. We'll eventually kill that queen at least. We'll probably not really deal that much damage. The other three zealots get intercepted while trying to move into the fourth base. But yeah, I mean, at least uh, some sort of scout. I mean, the damage is not really what it was not really worth it. Uh, okay, that's just an hallucinated phoenix over here dealing some unreal damage. So, ah, uh, Pescalita moving out with her units. I mean, it's only 82 to 128 army supply. If Pescalita actually manages to get a good angle with, like, maybe some sort of 
choke point like attacking on a ramp uh, this is not really a good angle from here so it's really difficult and right now uh, Mitsukatsu just realized well I have a whole of a lot of muters why not actually just get inside the main base and kill off important tech structures and workers while flying around and keeping the Protoss on its to uh, on, on their toes on her toes in this case so yeah and even getting some good positions where the blink stalkers can't really easily reach uh, Mitsukatsu maybe losing a few more um, a few more muters that she and then she actually wanted here but like I said before I mean this is just so annoying for a Protoss player to deal with always just moving around trying to kill all these units and if you actually have a player who's a little bit more experienced with muters uh, they will just always uh, out micro you always just flying away right at that moment when you would be close enough to fire them down not losing any muters the muter count will then just get higher and higher and higher and uh, once you move to the left hand side the muters will suddenly fly in from the right and this can be so annoying so now we have the big engagement in the middle of the map uh, most clump up army by um Piscalita here Piscalita just trying to keep most of these units away with force fields but she just doesn't have enough there's also ravages in the mix so the bios can also destroy the force fields and this is gg mitsukatsu ties the series two to two It is the final map of this best of five. We're on Whirlwind. Spawning to the bottom left hand side in purple. Playing Zerg for my risk. And Germany. It's Mitsukatsu. And to the top left in blue. Playing Protoss for she's got the lane. And Chile. It's Piscalita. Choosing to wall off on top of the ramp and I think that's a wise idea huge ass ramp is the entrance towards the natural base four player map so both players don't really know where the other one has spawned uh, Mitsukatsu will be lucky with her first overload scout sending it across the map the vertical route so we'll actually scout her opponent first let's see what Piscalita does Piscalita a little bit unfortunate will scout her opponent last well maybe a little bit earlier if Mitsukatsu just messes up with her overloader routing and um, yeah re actually re ending up revealing her own overlord while flying across the map if she realizes early enough that she gets into uh, vision range of that nexus and pulls back in time uh, she can actually avoid her opponent seeing the overlord thus just giving her the little advantage of keeping her in the dark a little bit longer so spawning pool already in the making after a hatch first build nothing all too unusual here so overlord flying in probe in the meantime trying to find the base of the opponent but it hasn't been found yet and the gateway will finish up in just a few seconds while the second gas geyser gets taken and now the wall off starts yes ladies and gentlemen this is play-by-play -play commentary par excellence overlord now flying in and now it actually doesn't even matter <laughs> if she reveals her overlord because Piscator's probe knows anyways where the base must be right now so yeah nothing uh, that's actually how huge this map is. Uh, but good for Mitsukatsu. She will just now have the possibility to fly around a little bit. Uh, wants to check for an early third base? Well, probably not. Just wants to fly out with the Overlord so it doesn't get shot down. And just wants to park it somewhere so she can just fly it in again later on to get the scout off. So, taking a third base. Uh, but there's a probe in place. Oh, basically, you just realized, just barely realized that the... Pro, uh, that the drone just wanted to plant it down. Now we have the one-on-one -on -one fight between the probe and the drone, carbot style. And I wish I just had something prepared here so that I could now just get in the overlay with the carbot drone, picking, chipping away at the drone while the drone is just, uh, well, the probe is just uh, shooting little lasers out of its eye, like you can see in the carbot cartoons. That would just be awesome. But unfortunately, maybe I will do it for next time. Bzzz.
Bzzzt, pick. Bzzzt, pick. And that would work out. So, yeah, actually the uh, drone had to run from the probe because the probe got the first hit and uh, then it doesn't really work. Well, actually it did two hits, I think, even before uh, Mitsukots reacted. So the drone was already wounded before it started attacking. Usually in a one-on-one -on -one between a drone and a probe, a drone will win due to the regeneration. And uh, But this time around the drone was already wounded pretty heavily before the fight started. So, or really started before the drone actually started attacking, so it had to run away. Stalker and a Zealot just being placed here, so it looks like a good old wall of four pisk leader here, while in the meantime, because, uh, uh, like I said, um, Mitsukatsu just went into a third base. So what is she up to this time around? Getting plus one melee attack. Interesting. So it uh, seems as if this time around she also wants to go for a lot of Zerglings and then wants to change into Muta straight away. Uh, could be critical if Piscalita actually went for the same build she did before. She did before, but uh, strangely uh, enough, going into Blink once more. I don't really know how much I like this decision. I mean, it's quite odd if you manage to win two games with your trademark build, going into a lot of sentries and stalkers, and only like one immortal or two. Uh, but then you suddenly change it up into a blink build and you get totally crushed <laughs> in game four. I don't know if I would do it again. And why? Well, what the? Oh, that was really, really close there. Mitsukatsu might have just gotten in to uh, the main base, natural base and main base of Piscalita here because there was actually no unit inside that gap here. I think that gap is actually pretty wide. I think you would actually need two units there. She was only relying of sen on sentries to close off that gap but was not really watching at that point in time when these Zerklings engaged. So, woo, that was a bit lucky there for Piscalita. Uh, then she uh, reacted quite in time to plant the force field down. But yeah, if Mitsukatsu had been more decisive with her links, she could have just easily gotten in. So seems if maybe Piscalina just wants to get into her good old army composition once more, but everything seems to be a little bit delayed, I feel. But there's the Ravagers. Okay, quite interesting choice then, going for melee attacks, but then just going into Ravagers and a Hydralisk then. Hmm, quite strange. So don't really know uh, the decision-making process right behind it. Why would you go for a plus melee attack if you then want to go into mass roaches and hydras and maybe later on lurkers? But yeah, whatever. So in the meantime we have Piscalita throwing down a forward pylon. Does she want to plant down a proxy building in order to have some and a direct warp in point right at the front? Then she would need to throw down another gateway here, but she hasn't done so yet. In the meantime, stalkers and the good old sentries and immortals just moving around. Like I said, the army composition that won her two games against her opponent. So let's see if it can win another one. Sneaking over to the left hand side, yeah. And she decides to use the slow warp in over here because she probably just didn't manage to get out of warp prison in time. Now Mitsukatsu realizes what's up. Unfortunately most of the Zerklings already get trapped. So it looks as if Piscalita already has a very very good army here. But this time around Mitsukatsu will have some Hydras available probably, but the army is significantly smaller than last time around. Good thing for Mitsukatsu though is that she has some ravages here, but yeah, if Piscalita actually manages to get into my natural base, she might be able to just totally cut off the uh, forces of Mitsukatsu here with force fields. Has to be careful not to lose the mothership core here. I mean, she really still wants to have it in case she wants to get back. Now she can't really reinforce anymore, except for that pylon over here that will only grant her slow warp ins. The force fields seem to have just gone, yeah, it seems that Piscalita is now out of force feed, she now has to fight against the remaining army plus the brute lords and the uh, drones of Mitsukatsu here, and Piscalita now up on top of the ramp, the drones and the rest of the army have killed a great chunk of Piscalita's army, no more warp ends coming in from behind, and it seems as if Mitsukatsu will just barely be able to clean up, not, oh, not after losing um, but only after, sorry, but only after losing um, the second base here, which is really not that crucial to her. She's still ahead in supply, has a third base up, and now finally the gateway opens and we would have been able to just get some reinforcements here. But yeah, that was just like the critical problem there for Piscalita, not being able to reinforce her army straight away, and the Ravagers just killing off the force fields that could have just held, uh, that could have just kept 
Mitsukatsu out of her own natural base. Now the warp prism is out, flying around, Mitsukatsu just chasing it like crazy. At the same time, no third base attempt whatsoever for Piscalita. I think that would be like the wisest decision to do right now. And there she goes, but the question is, I think she should have done that like a minute ago. So after realizing that she would probably not finish the game with that one push here, I think she should have immediately went into Nexus. I should have immediately gone into Nexus, sorry for that, but yeah, it's always easier said than done if you are the observer, because then you just have way more information than the player does, and uh, you can actually keep your head clear way easier as well. So let's see if Mitsukatsu can actually now punish her opponent for taking that third base over here. I think I would actually have even liked it more if she took the third base over here, but it seems as if Piscolita just wants to stay aggressive as well, and that's why she expanded towards her opponent. So Mitsukatsu just checking the third base location over here with only Lings. Now nah, she decides to go into the base. Now sees or has seen with the Overseer that the base is over here. Yeah, pretty difficult to get up here with the force field still in place, but Mitsukatsu managed to get into the natural base, now ravaging the mineral line. Uh, well, funny, funny enough that links are ravaging a mineral line and not the ravagers. But yeah, uh, getting a lot of probe kills here before Piscalita can finally get that po uh, that photon overcharge onto that pylon. Whew! Uh, in the meantime, at least that's one good thing though. She managed to get her third base up and also Mitsukatsu managed to re-establish her natural base. I mean, the minerals are pretty dry anyways, but they are full enough um, to justify rebuilding that base over here. In the meantime, we have a small little harassment force over to the right-hand side, and it's again Stalkers. Ugh, I still don't know how much I like it. We've seen Piscalita use Stalkers as a harassment force very often, and uh, I'm still of the opinion... I mean, now they have Blink. That's, of course, um, a great addition to the huge stuff, but yeah, now she's just going to lose those, ah, actually just loads them up and flies away the one prism just barely, so at least save them around this time, but very often throughout the season Piscalita just lost these four harassment stalkers without dealing enough damage to actually justify the investment, but this time around it, well, at least got her a queen. So, Mitsukatsu sitting around with the Overseer, uh, could just actually fly in once more, but I think she already has a good idea of what her opponent is doing. Still, I think she really wants to see what kind of tier 3 tech Piscalita is actually transitioning into. It's Temporal Archives, strangely enough, probably because she's seen so many Hydras. Piscalita just wants to have gateway answers uh, in form of storms to deal with these Hydras. Could work out quite well if these Hydras actually stayed Hydras, but now they're getting morphed into Lurkers, and not only a few of them, but 12. And this will be very problematic. I mean, we have uh, a Robo out, uh, we could get some detection, there's no detection out right now. There's no observer with the army. Is there one observer out at all? No. And this should be disastrous. Ow. Ooh. I, I don't know if I can watch people. Oh, I don't know if I can watch. And there we have another harassment out of Piscalita, just buying her some time. But unfortunately, Piscalita is probably not even aware that she needs to buy time in order to get out... Uh, detection and more valuable units against these lurkers because ugh, these just newly warped in high templars will probably not help her out that much. Mitsu's Kotz's army is on the move. Uh, might even check for a third base before burrowing these lurkers. But once these lurkers are burrowed somewhere in the ground, yeah, now even just just moving straight up that natural ramp, getting all of these lurkers buried. And now we have it. The big problem: this army just cannot engage. You don't want to engage into lurkers without having detection. Uh, seems as if leader just for a moment there hasn't even realized that there were lurkers in the play, losing half of her army in an instant there. And and still, that's actually the biggest problem. No way to engage the army. First observer of the game in production, but even if it comes out, what will Piscalita do? I mean, her army size is down to 39 to 98. And uh, Mitsukatsu not even taking a fourth base right behind it. She knows that she will probably win with this army composition over here. Okay, just wants to check a third, I think. Or just wants to engage the army straight up. Yeah, and then of course the biggest problem that uh, Mitsukatsu could always just check for the Observer Sniper down, and that's it! Mitsukatsu takes the series 
three to two.